Tom Byrne, welcome to An Actor's Spares. How are you doing, brother? I'm very well, mate. Thank you for having me. It's yes. To see you. Oh, man, you're, you're taking over the world right now. What, what you did in The Crown is so hard to come into a show like that where there's so many, and to, to make your presence known and, and to really make such distinguished and nuanced choices, you're, you're outstanding, man. I mean, you're, you're going to be a superstar. And so, I'm so glad I got you here for us before I have to, like, you know, call up Brad Pitt's, you know, management company. <laughs> Thank you, mate. That, that's very, very nice to hear. Thank you for saying no, that. No, man, you, you were great, man. And good-looking guy, dude. Great role for you. I'm, I'm really excited to hear more about it. But before we get there, let's start at yeah. the beginning, dude. What, so you grew up in the UK, right? Yeah, I, I grew up in, um, in a little... A village outside a town called Haverhill, which is in kind of Suffolk, uh, which okay. is 20 miles from Cambridge. So that's um, that's north, right? Uh, it's kind of like uh, East. It's called East Anglia, so it's like it's neither north nor south. It's kind of southernish. Um, Got it. But okay. Near Cambridge is the like the most notable landmark. Got it. And um, yeah, just grew up in in like a pretty quiet village. Had a I guess a typical childhood. Um, I. Yeah, I just did the regular thing. I went to school um, uh, in a, a standard state school. And um, by about, I kind of, I got into acting when I was about 11 um, because my mum had kind of, she'd noticed that I had a lot of like diffuse energy that I wasn't really knowing how to, where to put. Yeah. So she kind of got me involved with the amateur dramatics group and kind of, it, it kind of went from there. I, I got to play the Artful Dodger when I was that age and um, in, wow. in Oliver. And then um, just, just, just at like a town Amdram thing. And then I worked with that kind of company for the next five or six years on and off. And they were like incredibly supportive. And then I think by, by about 17, I realized, boom, you know, I want to be an actor. It Which kind you, of crystallized in my mind. You but, went to Bristol Old Vic, one of the best of all time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk to, talk to me about that experience with that company. What were you guys doing? Was it like a, a youth productions or were you doing like real, you know, modern? No, so I did, I did um, like a three year actor training course there. So it was all, yeah. it was like a degree course, but in acting. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was, a it was a fantastic place to kind of grow up um, for like from the age of 19 to 22. Yeah. It kind of, a hell of a lot of stuff goes on as a, as a person, like full stop. Um, yeah. But to get to pair that with this brilliant experience of training and getting to train. Cause I, I it was, you know, like the drama school auditioning process is absolutely brutal. Yeah. Um, so you, are you and, talking about for the youth theater one, or are you talking about for the uh, for Bristol Old Vic? For Bristol, for Bristol Old Vic. Yeah, I've heard stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's one of those things where you you do you realize that actually like a ludicrous amount of luck is involved in getting you to get into that place. Yeah. Well, um, um, for the uh, listeners, is it two contemporary monologues and two classical? Um, it's, it, I, I did, I did, uh, a very bad classical monologue. Which one? <laughs> uh, oh God. It was, um, I did, um, oh, it was, uh, this is the air. That is the glorious sun. Oh, Sebastian, nice. Sebastian from 12th night. And I did it terribly. And, uh, I know I did it terribly because I, I just remember like kind of looking at the, um, the kind of the artistic director at the time, yeah. John, and he was kind of like, he was doing that kind of. Like, oh, I, I've oh, had that happen to me, dude. I don't know. I don't, yeah. know. I, don't, I, I don't know, but I, I, I squeaked in. I think I, I did. Um, I did. I think everyone, everyone in the world did this. Every man and his dog did. Um, uh, there's a monologue from Posh. Uh, do, you, do you know Posh, the Laura Wade play? I don't know it. No. Um, it was. It was like a monologue that everyone was doing. It's basically the play is brilliant. It's about um, Bullington Club boys. Yeah, like, to check it out society at oxford kind of smashing up pubs it's very good fun but i did th those were my two and i kind of trotted them around and i didn't get in anywhere else but bristol took me wow um, and on, yeah. your, on your first try it was my it was actually my first try at bristol but my second year of trying to get in the first year i didn't get anywhere yeah um, i've been there dude it's so tough man i mean those I, schools you, I, what you're, i'm not discrediting your bristol but like it can really seem lottery like almost you know what i mean like yeah, no, totally, it, yeah. yeah that's amazing that you got in man and and especially with like the alumni that they have there i mean it's daniel day lewis you know yeah. like yeah. so talk talk to me about getting in was that when you were there was that like a great time in your life 
It was, it was, it was probably, it was like the happiest time in my life, definitely. Cause it was just, you kind of, you're thrown together with these people who will end up being your, you know, the best friends you've ever had. And you're do doing they do this thing. cuts there? Pardon? Do they do cuts there? Like, what, what do you mean? Like at Juilliard, they used to do cuts. Like every year, X amount of people wouldn't make it to the next year. Shit. No. Yeah. No, they didn't. Wow. Fucking hell. Did, did that happen? I, did I, you... No, no. Not, thank God I went to NYU. But uh, I've heard stories. They got rid of it recently, you know, because today's environment, that's not very that, cool. Yeah. Totally brutal. No, no. Yeah. We didn't have any. It was, it was, it was actually like, because I, I, my, my, I wanted to go to a drama school that was kind of, I had this um, drama center was the drama school I really set my sights on initially because it was quite a, it was, it was famous for like having quite like a military, like hardcore oh, wow. kind of vibe to it. And I kind of, I was, I found that kind of exciting, but um, Bristol wasn't like that at all. And I think actually it was exactly what I needed. It was an incredibly supportive learning environment and uh, it was a lovely city as well. Like if you ever get a chance, you should go because it's just, it's the people are great. And um yeah, yeah, I had an amazing time there. That's so wonderful, man. And and did you get get along with your class? Well, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, I I still live with two of my housemates. Our, our like, Alan nice. Graduated together. Lived with one of them for seven years now. Um, wow. Yeah. So you know, I, I did. I made some really really good mates there, which you know was wonderful. And 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 talk to me like going to one of the best bridge schools in the world. Do you feel like you walked out of there a lot more comfortable in your in classical skills? Because that's what I'm so jealous of. Right. Yeah. Sure. Um. Yeah. It, it's an interesting question. I think because basically, I mean, the industry in the last ten years, particularly like ten twenty years, I mean, like, but it's changed a lot. Like the emphasis has gone so so significantly towards film and TV. Yeah. Because that's where like 90% of the actual job opportunities are. So Well, and they can make much more money, you know? Yeah, ex well, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, I think they, they did a great job of like making sure that we left with that classical training, but it was, it's, it was a very balanced kind of, um, it, was, it was very balanced in that way. It wasn't um, overly weighted towards kind of classical stuff because I think they just had half an eye on like keeping up with where the industry was heading at the time which and seemed to be you know, this do day, they so. do they have a showcase built in for you guys uh -huh, yeah yeah so we did we did that in um we did that in April of our final year we kind of went down to London because uh, I mean like that was that that was one of the things with being being in Bristol it was quite hard to get the industry to come out you know so yeah. hundred miles. that was that was tricky but um yeah we, we did a showcase there and that's how I got my age and, and um, things went from there. Yeah. Amazing, man. And that's so awesome. And, and so talk to me, you know, when you, when you're coming out of a beautiful school, like Bristol Vic, you know, I, I know it's not easy for I, like Americans to go there or Brit Brits to come here, but did you ever think about like, maybe I should move to America or did you, were you comfortable in the theater film and TV London grind? Yeah, I, the, the, like now I'm thinking I'm more intrigued by the idea of what it would be like. I mean, the, obviously like the opportunities in America are, are, are incredible. Yeah. And they're alone. Um, at the time I was just, I was just excited to be moving to London with my mates and kind of, you know, being, you know, being an actor and yeah. that's what I'd always imagined, you know, kind totally. of like going to the national theater and kind of, you know, hanging out at the bar there, that kind of stuff. It was all kind of very poetically, part of like why I wanted to, I wanted to be an actor with my mates in London. Yeah. But like now I guess, yeah, maybe there's, there's a, there's a hankering to. Come to, on over to, dude. We'll, we'll audition again. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So <laughs> when, talk to me about some of your early auditions. What were you going in for? Oh man. Um, it's, it's funny. Like, well, I think when you, when you graduate, when I graduated, um, I was going up for like everything under the sun. And I remember like we talk, I was talking about it with my mate today that, like the, I, I got like two auditions through to play security guards. Oh really? really <laughs> like beefy guys. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, which I thought was brilliant casting for me, but apparently not. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't, didn't, didn't really go anywhere. Those security yeah. guards. But I think I, I yeah. get the same thing all the time too. And then they, <laughs> and they're like, no. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome, man. Did you, um, what, if, what about like normal people? I could totally see you going in for that. I did. I didn't actually go in for that. I saw it though. It was absolutely brilliant. I thought. Yeah, it. yeah. Paul and Daisy are friends. They're the best. But I, yeah. just, I could see you. You know, 
in, in I mean, the- I, I, I would have loved to have been there. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't get seen for it, but don't get me wrong. Well, so then, um, so you booked Black Mirror. Was that your first big television credit? Right, so here's the thing, man. So um, I, so it looks good on my CV, and I was working on that job, but I wasn't employed as an actor. I was employed, I, have you ever done this? It's where they, they don't have a, they can't get the dates to synchronize for both actors in the scene, so they need someone to stand in. Stand in, in. yeah. Right, so I was, I was doing that, and, I was, and it, was, it was a brilliant experience. I had a great yeah. time. Yeah. Wasn't, I wasn't employed as an actor. They did try to get me, they did try to get me, like, to feature in some way. So I was kind of, if you like, if you like. Pause really, it, you can see. Yeah. <laughs> you can see like the top of my head, like the peak of yeah. my cap. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that, that was, I mean, it was still a great experience. I got to fly out to like Granada and um, hang out on a cliff top for a couple of days. So that was oh, pretty man. Cool. Yeah, can, can you, can you tell people what episode it was? It was, um, it was the one with Topher Grace and Andrew Scott. Oh, the, the, the so you came to America. I did not. No, no, no. Oh, I, I thought they shot that in the in the Joshua Tree. They may have done the the, the bit that may may have because it was like filmed in two separate. Ah, like, got it, got it. So I was I was where I was I was with Topher Grace when he was he was he was shooting his bit. Amazing. Um, I learned a lot from him, definitely. Um, oh, so yeah. you had to bro down with him. I mean, I wouldn't call it a bro down. Um, yeah. he was very much in you know in the work which was which is cool but it was it was great to like you know just watch him watch someone yeah what they that 70 film. show love it exactly, um, yeah. so tell me man you know being a graduate of one of the biggest drama schools in the world were you going in for a lot of theater um you know what um i'd say to be honest i i think it depends on it depends on loads of factors. I, I actually, I'd say it was always more like TV and film balanced. I'd say it was probably like 80, 20. And I think, I think that's the, the experience of most, a lot of actors. Oh, um, wow. Just because I think there's simply more TV work going right yeah, now. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, it, I, I, I did find that I was kind of, I tended to be more, I tend to be, tended to be getting more of the theatre jobs that I was going up for. Um, but... I'd say it was, yeah, it was more kind of TV balanced, yeah. That's so yeah. beautiful, man. Well, t- tell me, when, you know, when did you hear about this, you know, Prince Andrew role being, you know, needed to be cast? Was it, did your agents tell you what it was? Because I know with big auditions, sometimes they give you fake sides and they give you a fake project. No, no, it, was, it wasn't that co- like kind of covert. I've heard, yeah. oh, I've heard some men, my mate um, is on a job. And I can't even say, I can't say what job he's on, but he doesn't know his, there's a guy who's working on it with him. He doesn't know his character's name yet. And he's wow. worked on the job, um, which is, you know, it's that, it's that bloody covert. Um, no, no, it was nothing like that. I, um, I I'd auditioned the previous year for Prince Charles, which I didn't get, obviously. Um, and uh, I, but the audition kind of went well and I got good vibes from the, from the office. And so um, when, when the kind of Prince Andrew audition came through, I did, I kind of thought maybe, maybe there might be, you know, maybe I might be. A yeah. Shoot. Um, and I also, I, I looked at like pictures of him age 22, just because I wanted to check it out. Yeah. And it, lo- it looked like my face. So I kind of thought, oh, you know. I, I got this one. <laughs> I, I got this one if I don't fuck it up. Um, did, you, did you feel it in the room after you finished auditioning? Like, did you feel connected? Like, I think I, I, I gave it my all or did you, cause like no, all, all the one, all the ones I feel like I bomb, I get, and all the ones I feel like I crush, I never did. Well, see, this is, this is what I was hoping. Cause I, yeah. I had a bomb feeling. I was like, I fucking bombed this audition. <laughs> like, this is, I was literally having like a full scale panic attack. Like I was dry mouthing. And there was a moment I remember when I was supposed to smile. Um, and my, ma- my mouth was so dry. That I smiled, and um, when I stopped smiling, my lips stayed up here. <laughs> but, uh, it. My, I didn't lift up there. Um, no, mate. I, I genuinely, I, I completely. Um, I, I did the, I did the self tape. Self tape was great. Went in for the recall, and I had, you know, I had the feedback was positive, and um, I kind of thought, okay, if you know, I just go in and do the same thing that I did in the yeah. last, in the, tape. and I ended up like completely thinking myself into a hole 
and yeah. kind of overthinking it and becoming so controlling over like every single like moment of my performance to the point that I was just like like C three POing my way through it. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I got I got a call the next day and they just said, look, like we liked you, but you were just too nervous and we think we're gonna have to look look for someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I got like I got what? as yeah, I, I no. I didn't, usually, I, they're they're not that blunt. You know what I mean? That's no, <laughs> no. But I, you know, I I did appreciate it because they, you know, I I I kind of I was like I did want to know because I, and I, and it was really really hard. And then what ensued was like a good couple of months of me kind of processing this. this oh, like it was months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you that, yeah. you literally let it go. I'd let it go. Yeah. It was, um, I'd kind of, I'd done another little job, which was great because it meant that, you know, it gave me a bit of confidence. Yeah. And I did, I did that. And I kind of, I'd, I'd kind of pinned up the Prince Andrew, like, like fucking disaster. Yeah. What a disaster audition is like a kind of like a, le a seminal lesson. Like this is the point which I would look back to and kind of go, yeah. Okay. I'm never going to do that again. Yeah. Uh, because I had re I just like wanted it way too much and kind of got in my own way so yeah yeah um and uh yeah then like eight weeks went by and i got a call from my agent and she kind of she was like okay so this is a bit weird but they want you back in for prince andrew i was like what and she was like yeah they just can't they can't find the guy or whatever and i was like okay okay and i was you know it was like a mixture of like really positive feelings of okay well maybe i didn't screw it up that badly yeah so they don't Again, but also kind of the dread of like oh god this was such like a such a disappointment and I was so did so gutted about this that I'm not sure I want to revisit it because it was like a yeah like it was a, a traumatizing experience man yeah it was just it was such it was it was crap did you um, come back in with a fuck it I've already lost it attitude or did you come back in with the I'm gonna prove them wrong right so this is the thing I never got to re-audition because they couldn't get the dates to work they couldn't, they just couldn't get us. I know they couldn't get everyone in the right place at the right time to be able to audition me. So, um, I, I was just kind of like waiting, waiting and kind of like, I was, as far as I knew, I was going to go back in. And then, uh, and then I was kind of at home on a Friday, it was 4 45 PM or something like that. And the phone goes off and it's always on a Friday. I'm sure you know that. Yeah. Like, but you know, it's when always on the Friday that you get the calls. Yeah. And, uh, and I kind of picked up the phone and my agent was like, okay, so I've got some good news and some bad news. And I was like, okay, some bad news, please. Yeah, and yeah, I like, always. Get, I got to yeah, get it over. Yeah, back. yeah, exactly. Um, and she was like, the bad news is they don't want you back in to audition for Prince Andrew. And I was like, oh, okay. But then I was like, there is some good news. So maybe I get to say a line or I'm in a scene or maybe, you know, just something little or whatever. There's a good news attached to this. And then she was like, the good news is that they don't want you back in for Prince Andrew because they want to offer you the part. Wow, dude. Like, do, you, yeah. do you remember where you were and what you were doing when you got that call? Okay, so yeah, I, I got the call. I, I, was, I, was, I don't remember what I was doing, but I remember hearing that piece of information and then I just don't remember anything. Blacked out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, where the hell am I? And I, I was kind of in my garden just, and I hadn't said anything for like 40 seconds. Cause it was just, I was just like, and she was, my agent was like, Tom, Tommy, you okay? And it, yeah, it was, it was kind of mad. It was, it was, wow. mad. It, it, it took, yeah, it was completely complete, like genuinely so surreal and surprising um, and you know, incredible. But that's yeah, amazing. And, uh, yeah. I'm, cur I'm curious to ask you, man, cause I've had a, a lot of British actors on the show at this point. And it doesn't seem like you guys use coaches there, do you? I don't, mate. I, yeah. I'd love, I think they're brilliant. I, I'd love to. Yeah. Um, that, that so you must be that good that you, could, you just deliver that on your own. Because I, like, us Americans, I think we need to be forced into choices sometimes. Otherwise, it can be just read, like, acting instead of, like, living. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't, I've never thought about that as being um, – thing i mean I, I guess what i would say i don't have coaches but my my mates are like when we're filming self tapes with friends um i mean they become in a sense coaches i yeah. guess is equivalent like the amount of direction that goes on 
amongst my mates is actually quite significant. So we're able oh, wow. to just kind of like, you know, give, give one another a, a bit of, uh, you know, corral each other into choices and stuff. Yeah. So I guess, but I mean, mate, I, I, I mean, the only thing stop, stopping me from getting a coach is, you know, financial reasons. I think absolutely. Yeah, kind of I know. Thing. Yeah. I only <laughs> use them when I really, really, you know, have to, because I, the way I look at it is like, you know, I, 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 I could spend this money on an acting class and this is a, a, a very quick version of an acting class, you know, yeah. Yeah. where the attention's all on me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's awesome, man. So how was filming it? Oh, mate, it was, it was, it was just, it was amazing. It was yeah. so great. It was a wonderful experience. Um, yeah, everyone was, uh, like, I, I, obviously I kind of, because I hadn't been, I hadn't played the part since I'd blown it in that audition. So when I came in for the first day, I was, I was like really nervous. And I mean, the sky, the size of the thing is it, like, everything is massive. Yeah. There's hundreds of people working on the show at any one point. And like, you know, the, the, the houses you're in are huge. And I mean, for my entrance, whether, you know, I lit the, the helicopter lands, I mean, every, everything about it is just so big and kind of, impressive yeah. and it is kind of like quite overwhelming when you step onto that because you're like fucking hell like yeah it's just it's just a lot um but what oddly but i think i think it was just that thing of because i got you know they'd given me the job yeah and you know as soon as you step onto that set you are the person for the job and there's yeah. like everyone treats you like that you're not being scrutinized or you're not being not that you know you know well i guess audition panels have to do that but it, when, when you kind of i think there is a thing that happens when you when you arrive you're like okay now i'm supposed to be here this is fine yeah. and yeah once once i'd kind of gotten off that initial nervousness it was just it was just amazing like that's amazing. It, was, it was an incredible yeah it was an incredible um pr a privilege to be part of it what was your um, process right uh what was your process like? Because you're playing a real person. Did you listen to audio recordings? Did you get to, to meet him or? Uh, no, no, yeah. no, I didn't, I didn't meet him. Um, and was, was it, was it also like, I, 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 uh, we'll just ask this one time and get the elephant out of the room. I imagine yeah. you guys filmed this right as Epstein died, right? Right. Yeah. yeah so was, yeah, yeah. was that weird then with all the scandal and cause I imagine uh, there was probably more heat. Uh, and in the UK on the whole thing than there ever had been. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 it's kind of, it's a kind of a boring answer, I guess, but I genuinely try to completely ignore it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just the reason that from like, from my perspective, not only was I playing someone who is, you know, that who was 20 years old at the time um, that it was happening, I just kind of realized that I didn't need to engage with it. And if, and if I did, it would probably end up influencing the way I was playing the character. In a negative way. Um, you know, and I, yeah. didn't need, I didn't need to do that. Like people were gonna kind of, when they watch the show, they're gonna turn up with their own opinions of yeah. the map anyway. But like from a process perspective, I kind of, um, I, I did try to treat it as much like um, a play yeah. as, I, as, I, as anything. Like it, I, I never kind of, felt like I was, um, I was having to, um, it wasn't biographical is what I mean. I kind of, and I kind of tried to remove that yeah. sense so that I could just be a bit more free with it and a bit more, cause you know, you don't want to feel trapped by the weight of, um, playing someone who is, you know, real. Yeah. So I kind of thought, thought like from my own perspective, how might I imagine Prince Andrew to be? Um, and I tried to leave the, kind of um biographical stuff at the door really i mean i yeah. did i did i listened to a lot of him speaking um and a few youtube kind of clips there's not actually as much as you'd think i can understand why yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well talk to me man you know was that would you say that the crown was like your film school oh yeah definitely definitely wow. just kind of being on set with some of the like these actors you do just you just notice the way they work and yeah and how um alive they are to to one another and like there was like there was one scene i was barely in it but tobias menzitz uh plays prince philip he um he, he had like a monologue at the beginning of this scene and it was only like five or six lines long but the whole it was like um 
it was for Edward's 21st birthday and he was just, he, every single time he came to do it, it was completely different and it wow. was prompted by what everyone else happened to be doing in the scene. And it was, it was just great. You know, it was, it was watching someone being that relaxed. Yeah. And kind of open um, to what was actually going on in front of them was just, it was just, I mean, it's so, it's so simple, but just seeing it done that well was kind of, was, was a, it was a brilliant example of like some of the things that I felt I learned on that job. And I, uh, I, don't, I don't think this would be a spoiler because history's dictated it. You, are, you, are you coming back? I, mate, I, I so wish. I so wish I was. I, I don't think I am. No. Really? Because yeah, there's yeah. too much, you know, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, think, I, think they, I think it's like a two-season thing. So like every two seasons, the entire cast um changes um, ah. uh but I, oh I they're gonna you mean they're gonna get an older actor i get what you're saying I, yeah yeah I, th I think that's why I, I i don't know whether prince andrew's in it though i've heard i've heard mixed things i think i saw a thing in the, in the papers the other day that he's not going to be in it that um, would make sense to me for... yeah it would make sense to me as well yeah well dude that's awesome so talk to me what 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 else are you up to um so i I actually, I recently got back from filming um, a, uh, an indie film in, um, in Scotland on the Outer Hebrides in the Isle of Lewis. Um, it's called The Road Dance. It's directed by uh, Richie Adams. Um, and I, I, I was out there for about a month wow. from at like, the end of, like kind of middle of October to the middle of November. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was incredible. I mean, like particularly now to be like, to be working at all is, is unbelievably fortunate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had an amazing, amazing time on that job. Um, yeah, it's really good, really good fun. Made some good friends. That's yeah. so cool, man. And I imagine every casting director knows who you are at this point. So you're probably just getting seen for a lot more. Is that cool? Um, I mean, I, I hope, I hope. I hope <laughs> you I deserve hope so. so. You deserve it, dude. <laughs> um, I, I, I think, yeah, definitely. There has been, I have noticed there's been like a few, you know, a few, uh, like an uptake in things happening in like yeah. for the, you know, in the last couple of uh, weeks or months. Um, but, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you know this, like, it's important never to uh, assume that anything's going to happen as an actor because yeah. it's, you know, you just never know. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, for, for now, it's been, it's, been, it's been great that the reaction's been positive yeah. for the show as well. Like, um, uh, so, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's cool. It's all good. So beautiful, man. Oh, dude, it's been such a pleasure. i got a final few questions for you. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, man, I, I know there you guys are already on lockdown and it's been a crazy time in the world. But, uh, you know, all the young Toms out there that are trying to fight their way into a drama school or whatever their route is. Any words of advice or wisdom? Yeah. Um, don't try. I guess I guess don't try to. Um, don't try to do what people you think people want you to do. Yeah. Um, just kind of, uh, I guess begin from begin from like what you love and what you're passionate about and enjoy and do that. Um, and yeah, don't overthink anything. Um, just kind of lead with lead with courage and uh, <laughs> everything else will fall on its place. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Lead with, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fucking hell. No, don't you're lead. brilliant. You got it. I mean, don't worry. Why not? Lead with courage, lead with yeah. courage and everything will be great. Love it, dude. You're so, so rock and roll. Well, <laughs> last one, man, is what's mm. keeping you inspired? Uh, great question. Um, I guess, I mean, I watched, I watched an amazing show um, uh, on the National Death of England oh. um, a couple of nights ago. And I'm, I'm not really one for like watching theatre from home. Yeah. Um, like live stream thing doesn't often like usually work for me, but I was watching that and I just thought it was, that was absolutely fantastic to get to see. Um, I'm reading, I'm, I've started reading uh, The Alchemist. Oh yeah. Lovely book. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, that's quite, uh, that's quite an inspiring book. Yeah. Uh, it's all right. about leading from courage and love and everything being great. Follow your dreams. Um, I, I, yeah, I, it's, it's tricky time though for, for you know, finding inspiration at the moment uh, it really is yeah it really is and uh it is it's hard it you know it does get hard um but i guess 
I guess, I guess just remembering the things that are great and, yeah. uh, and that are out there for you to enjoy and like connecting with people and, um, you know, not physically, obviously. Yeah. Um, but you know, kind staying of staying in the, the technology in, availability that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just opening, opening your arms to everything and, yeah. uh, and trying to be nice as well. Amazing. Well, Tom Byrne, yeah. you're going to be a superstar, brother. I got so much love for you, man. And, and yeah. dude, when this is all over, come see me in New York and we'll hang out. I, I, I would love that. That would be yeah. so nice. Yeah. Do you, do you have Instagram? I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm at, um, I think Tom Byrne 31. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you 31? Uh, I'm not, actually. I'm 26. Oh, but, really? Uh, I'm just yeah. curious. It's my, uh, it's my birth date. It's like nice. 30 first. Yeah. Oh, you got a, a fake account, bro. I know. Yeah, mate. I know. <laughs> it's, uh, I, it's been set up by, uh, is that Tom Byrne official? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even the official Tom I Byrne. know. What the hell? I don't, I don't officially exist. You should. Um, well, well, Elena, you got to get them verified. <laughs> yeah. I will. I will. I'm going to shut that person down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, when I post this episode, I'm going to put follow the real Tom Burr. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dude, I got so much love for you, man. Nice one, mate. Love. So thank you so much for having me on here. It's been a pleasure. Oh, dude, come back, please. When the next yeah. thing, we'll do it. I'd love to. I'd love All to. Right. Right. Thank you very much, Happy mate. Well, brother. Much love. Have a great one. I am thrilled to announce that In Actor Despairs is partnering with a wonderful CBD company called Kind Farms. Everyone out there has heard of CBD. I started taking it a few years ago when I first started getting sober and to help with my anxiety. Sadly, as one can do, I was overtraining in the gym and a friend recommended a topical and a tincture to help with the pain. I tried it. It was okay. However, recently, I was introduced to a product that has really changed my life. Not only has it helped me with anxiety, but I am stronger than I have ever been. I'm able to carry out lifts my body used to prevent me from doing. Kind Farm products have single-handedly changed my life athletically and personally. They utilize 100% local licensed farmers, organic cultivation, and CO2 extraction for superior CBD. Kind Farms is turning CBD to a kind alternative to pharmaceuticals. Let's transform tobacco row into hemp row. If you want to get involved, please reach out. Together, we can make a difference. You can use my code Ryan10 for 10% off. You can find them on Instagram at Kind Farms Inc. All one word. That's K I N D P H A R M S I N C. And their website is KindFarmsInc.com. Once again, my code for 10% off is Ryan10.